What's up animators and welcome to On The Go, a series where I show you short but useful mindware tips within 5 minutes. And remember, this is based on your questions. Questions that are too simple to deserve their own tutorial, but too complex to explain in the comment section. And today I want to cover background settings, so let's begin. For this video, I just imported a scenery, the one you've also seen before because I like it very much. I'm gonna turn on HD render mode and I'm gonna hop into my background settings to show you what things do. First up, we have the show sky or show custom image. You can select this. Bras for texture, it's gonna take a while. And you have your texture onto the sky, but it doesn't move with the sky, so that's the bad part. You can tick off stretch to fit, so now it's showing just a portion of the sky. You can select the type image to sky sphere, so now it's actually in the sky. And you can also rotate it, that's new didn't know this and you can also change it to a skybox so now it's mapped onto the skybox you can take on map texture so now it's gonna be mapped from different parts of the image just like mapping textures on a cube you have six different faces on the image and you can also change the rotation of the skybox itself but moving on we have the sun texture you can change the texture of your sun you can change the moon texture obviously here you have the time you've probably seen this before and the time also affects the color of the lighting you have the rotation here so you can change the rotation from where the sun is gonna be shining. Next thing we have sunlight range. Sunlight range changes how far the sun will shine. So I don't have any shadows back here because the sunlight isn't reaching far enough. And the more you increase this, the more accurate the shadows are gonna be. But at the same time, the more you increase this, the more jagged and glitchy the shadows will become because the resolution of the shadows then changes. I go to 10,000, I'm already getting artifacts here. I wanna go as low as possible without losing the edges of the shadows. You can also make this follow the camera so now the distance of the sun is going to start with the camera. As you can see, I'm drawing shadows when I move the camera. Next, you have sunlight strength. This defines the strength of how much the sun will affect the environment. Here's an option that desaturates night. So you have nighttime. I've got night colors here. If I raise the night colors up and I desaturate the night, you see the saturation gets taken away. Then you've got show clouds or not. You can make them flat. You can make them the story mode clouds from Minecraft. You can change the cloud texture, cloud speed, how fast they travel by default, clouds Y clouds block size so how big they are clouds height so how thick they are and clouds offset if you just want to offset them left and right then you have an option to show ground or not you can change the ground plane to be any minecraft texture you want change the texture of the ground then I could change the biome so if I go to mountains you can see everything gets way more blue because that's the hue on the foliage color of the grass you can see that in minecraft texture pack desert say it's gonna be very yellowish uh variant this is just the variant of the biome doesn't matter and here you can change change different things like the sky color so if you want to make your sky red <laughs> You can mess with the clouds. You can mess with the sunlight. If you want to go for a sunset sort of thing, you can just change it to orange. That's a good thing. You can change your ambient colors. And this is basically the shadows. My shadows get super dark. Be careful when you use this because it's easy to mess it up. It has to be night for you to change the colors, but you can change the night colors. I usually don't use the night at all. Show fog or not. You can make the fog appear on the sky or not on the sky. You can give it a custom color so the fog can be any color you want. I've covered that before. And you can change the object color. So the objects that are affected by the fog are now orange because I've said so. So you can change the fog and the objects in the fog individually. And then you can change the fog distance. That's how far the fog is going to be. The fog size is the transition of the fog from fully foggy to no, no, non-foggy at all. And the fog height, how high up in the sky the fog is going to go. Then at the end, we have enable wind. This is just going to add some wind to all the things that are naturally affected by the wind. So fire, leaves, grass, all that sort of stuff. You can change the strength and the speed how fast it's going and how much it's going to actually affect it you can get some pretty nice windy effects oh and also creates waves i forgot to say that you can also make the leaves opaque but it requires you to reload the project as entirely and i'm too lazy to do that so that's homework for you and that's it for me today hope you enjoyed i hope i didn't cross my five minute mark but if you had fun you know what to do the buttons are all down there somewhere and with that on the side i'll see you guys next time stay sharp